a world forged in conflict, claimed as homeland by the exiles, conquered as territory by the Dominion. There is only one whose words we can trust. Geeks of Nexus. Episode 2.0 of the brand new Geeks of Nexus. Have you want to look at it? Um, I may have said we're back at the beginning. It's just me. I'm back. Hi. Um, you may have noticed my little intro that I did a couple of days ago that I put up on the uh, on the iTunes just to let people know that we're working back and it was just going to be me. I might keep referring to we instead of me or I because it just seems a bit weird. And I'd like to include you as part of Geeks of Nexus. So when I say we, I refer to all of you lovely people as well. So Geeks of Nexus, for those of you that don't know, we were a podcast that um, launched at the beginning of Wildstar last year when it when it launched officially. Um, we started our podcast up, it was myself, Tan Van and Sparky, my two other co-hosts. And fortunately, um, Sparky and Tan Van stopped playing the game about around the time when a lot of other people also stopped playing the game which we're not going to dwell on too much we all know the issues and everything that went around on Wildstar but we're going to put a positive spin on things on this podcast because that is why I'm bringing the podcast back which I'll explain a little bit earlier now we had a really good one we had a lot of good feedback from the podcast when it came out last year we had a lot of good followers we had the guild going we had a little community and it was a real shame that we had to lose it and over the months that I've been playing Wildstar and especially over the, the last sort of few months with the last sort of patch that's come out and the news that uh, we're going free to play and the responses that I've been getting from people in the community generally and on Twitter people that are asking about whether it's worth coming back I thought now is a good time to actually bring the podcast back so that people who are thinking about it maybe on that little cusp of should I, shouldn't I during this podcast I'm going to try and convince people that you should come back to Wildstar there's also going to be uh, things for people who are playing of course because that's why I'm here news as normal features um, I'm also going to be having guests on so on that note I don't expect it to just be me every week that would be really really boring um, like I said before I'm not as angry as Tan Van I can't get that angry it's literally impossible um, I can never be as funny and as quirky as Sparky he is very unique and there's no way I can compete with that I can just be me um, it might get a little bit boring every week it just being me not well, probably for you as well, but mainly for me. So my plan is to bring in guests. I'll have um, people from the QNC, other other podcasters, people who are creating content, or just gamers. If you if you're, you're you like raiding, you like PvP, and you want to come on and talk about it, then hey, drop me a line, and I might have you on the show. You can spend you know an hour with me, chatting about Wildstar. So the plan for the future of the podcast, now that it's back, is to bring you up-to-date news, up-to-date community content, everything really that I can think of in my researching running up to the podcast. But my main thing is to try my very, very, very best to entertain you. Alright? And we are going to have the law segment. I've uh, I commissioned Sparky to do the last three that were uh, meant to finish the last series. If you've been keeping up with the uh, with the podcast so far, when I gave my little introduction stating that I was going to bring the podcast back, I put out all of the law segments that we did during the last show. It was basically part of the show um, when it went out before. And I decided let, just to let people um, sort of catch up from where we were, I've put them out on the podcast for you all to listen to. There won't be one for this podcast, because Sparky hasn't recorded the next one yet, but they will be available, and from them on, either myself or Sparky will record future episodes um, of the law segments to keep you all excited. If there's any particular law 
that you would like to listen to or you would like us to sort of have a go at um, making then let us know um, your favourite bit of law or just one that you'd might like to have in our law segment just uh, just drop us a line and on that note you can find us on twitter at geeks of nexus you can also find us on our main website because we are part of the epic geeks network so you can find us on uh, epicgeeks.co.uk and we also have a email which is geeksofnexus at gmail.com so you can drop us a line on any of those formats um, either because you want to be a host uh, for the day or because you want to ask a question or you just want to drop us a line and say hi um, or you want something or you want to tell us something that you think might be useful for the podcast so we love listeners comments i love listeners comments and questions so uh so send them my way Hey paper, paper, read all about it. Hey Grano, hey big bouncer, eat some of this nose over here. Hey 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 chewer, this broadsheet's bigger than you. <laughs> hey, hey, come on guys, it's only 60 gold. Get back here. News of the week. Yes, this is news of the week. It's not really news of the week, because some of this has been news for a long time. But uh, because the, the uh, podcast hasn't been here, and as I said, this is kind of for new and old players, people who are, have been playing and haven't left, people who might be thinking of coming back, people who have come back. So I thought for the first week, the first time back, we have a sort of general look as at what's changed over Wildstyle. I'm not going to go into like technical details. This is just like the real brief what's changed. Um, and a lot was said last year when, when Wildstyle launched. Uh, whether it was uh, too difficult, and I think we said a lot on the podcast, I don't think it was too difficult, it's just it didn't necessarily have enough for the casual people, the people that didn't want to go to that high-end raiding, people that just wanted to have fun with their friends and, and play an MMO. The sort of people that keep a uh, an MMO going, really, the people that create the community. There wasn't really a lot for them back there, but that's changed a lot. I mean, generally, it was a much more casual approach to this game now than there ever was and it's a real shame really that it didn't launch like this because I feel that if that we would have had a lot more people playing a lot more people engaged because um, most of the reasons that people left the game have been fixed in my opinion there might be a few little things maybe that people aren't happy about and might want to change but in general most of it has been sorted and lots have been said again about whether it was pushed out too soon probably yes because again if it was launching now i think a lot of people would be, st would be staying on i mean it had a lot to compete with last year as well a lot of mmos were released last year um but you know we can't go back on it now what i think we need to look at is this new free to play model which i think is going to kind of be a rebirth for wild star and that's what we need to focus on getting some new players in so we can uh, play with more people um so the game fundamentally is fun to play that's that is the basic that we need to get out there to people the look and feel of the game is breathtaking to me i've always loved the style and humor in the game um the humor especially that's what drew me in when i saw that trailer last year that just had me in stitches and and it still does to this day when i show it to people um and i've started eating more cupcakes oddly uh we really should maybe stop that um but if you have left the game or you haven't tried it it's well worth giving it a go uh when it's free to play or signing up for the free to play beta uh you know, then you might actually decide whether you want to come along and, and play along with us and you never know you might want to stay um if you want to hop in now then why not do the 10 day free trial yes there's a free trial then you might think hmm, that's all right i might actually suffer a few months before it goes free to play or if you're that much of a skin flint or you're just really poor or you're a student uh, or you've got better things to spend your money on then just uh, do your free trial see if you like it and then wait a few uh, few months for it to go for you to play how about that? anyway uh, on with the changes so Carbine have been working really really hard to make quality of life changes for players which I think a lot of people appreciate um, finally keeping the hardcore element whilst also play pleasing the casuals which is something that I'm pretty sure I said on the podcast many months ago 
so they've also done a great job sorting out the bugs and issues that hurt the game at launch it really did it was quite painful especially when they kept uh, putting out that content really really quickly when it wasn't really that ready I mean I kind of uh, I feel a bit sorry for them in a way because they were doing what they promised they were bringing out really fast content but it was just coming out a little bit too fast because they hadn't finished it yet um, but they learnt a lesson and you know up to them when you learn a lesson and you make changes because of it then that's what it's all about learning from your mistakes it's a very valuable life lesson people learn from your mistakes and that's what carbine's done kind of ironic though that a lot of the changes that they've that they've made are mistakes that other mmos have done in the past um not going to mention wow too many times but wow made these mistakes long long ago and changed them and i kind of feel it a little bit strange that another company comes out and then makes the same mistakes and then realizes why the other mmo changed them in the first place so they've now changed them um but never mind you you know you learn from your own mistakes but sometimes you should learn from other people's mistakes any new people making new mmos out there maybe think about that one hmm hmm um anyway uh, for those of you that did play and left, here's a brief rundown of the changes since launch, plus a rundown uh, of the latest patch content. Now I'm going to be reading a little bit of this because there's quite a lot to try and remember, so bear with me. So there's been some huge mergers, uh, so, uh, there's been some huge server mergers. Uh, what basically happened when uh, Wildstar launched is that there weren't enough servers and people couldn't get on. There was like huge hours and hours and hours queuing time. So they gave us loads more servers so we could all get on with plenty of time um, and then people started to leave and then we had too many servers because there wasn't enough people on all those servers so what they've basically done is combined into like mega servers so that everyone can play together pretty much and there's suddenly people in the capital cities again Woohoo! Um, so you can actually play with people which is nice um, Carbon also no longer pushing out bud content as I said once a month choosing to release content when it is ready quite right too um, this is a brand new instance since launch a pvp pvp p -p 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 lots of p's in that pvp battleground called sabotage if you missed that trailer at the end of last year it is well worth a revisit quite funny in the usual uh, carbine style sabotage uh, two new dungeons a level 10 protostar style dungeon and a level 50 protostar star proto style Proto Star Style Dungeon. You can tell it's been a while since it's done a podcast. I can't speak anymore. I've, I've lost the ability to use my mouth. I should have done some uh, uh, warm up exercises before. A big bucket of blue blueberries. There. Um, you may have noticed when I'm talking on my own with no one else to, uh, to speak to, I start to go a little bit insane. So I apologise for that in advance. Um, one thing I was going to say though about the, the Protostar dungeons, especially level 10, quite handy for teaching you how to play the game. Like it shows you the the, the fundamentals of your, of your whatever you're choosing, if you're a tank, if you're a DPS, if you're a healer, uh, what your role is within the group, which is quite helpful going on uh, for when you sort of do dungeons a bit later on. Um, they've continued the storyline, uh, the quest following Drusira, for those of you that love lore. Uh, there's also one new zone, the Defile, with linear quests and dailies. There was an attunement nerf, for those of you that maybe got to level 50 and got fed up with trying to get attunement. Uh, there's no longer a silver requirement in dungeons, uh, so it's much easier when you're pugging. Uh, you just need to get your bronze. Um, there's guaranteed epic drops in dungeons. Removal of the random aspect of ruin slots and gear, which people absolutely hated. And it was slightly pointless and annoying. Uh, so that's quite nice, but it's still uh, still giving a re-roll for slot type. Currency is being revamped as well with Renown um, and Elder Points being used for cosmetic items and amp points. Also, new currency Glory is used for purchasing gear, which can be earned through dungeons and raids. Um, Carbine has also made some fundamental changes uh, to the game. The MMOs like WoW changed and tweaked long ago, like I said before. Um, Performance is much more stable in multiple systems. There's a 15% increase in experience to help speed up levelling. Uh, increase to base health through grit making survival uh, easier. 
uh, unless you're unless you suck pretty much um, they've also there's no longer 20 uh, 20 rounds 40 man raids surprise surprise didn't last very long uh, it's now gone back down to 20 which is much more manageable for any guild to sustain so um, up on that so the last patch invasion nexus which is out already but with it a lot of nice quality of life changes uh, the hollow wardrobe system um, so costume pieces no, are no longer items um, but basically you you store in your hollow wardrobe how the appearance that you want your your character to have and then you can just flick between between them all you haven't got to keep those items in your bag or anything like that um, and you can do it much more simply you haven't got to go and see a vendor or anything like that you can just do it from your UI um, protest star contracts which is also a nice change task players with the uh, completion of various PvE and PvP activities all across Nexus uh, players completing these contracts earn progress on the reward track and they can get powerful gear and fabulous rewards level 50 players you can find your protostar contract dispenser in Thead or Ilium to learn more is that how you say that? Ilium? I've never really said it, I look at it on a screen Ilium I guess so um, that's your capital cities in case you don't know there's a new 20 player raid called Initialize, Initialization Core Y83 Y-83 uh, is a single boss 20 player raid instance that has opened uh, up within the defile this encounter also comes with an opt-in challenge mode that increases the encounter's levels of difficulty uh, there's a red versus blue same faction battlegrounds enjoy some good old battleground fun battleground queues can now pit groups of the same faction against each other so you can you know beat up some you don't like if they're on the same faction as you which is nice we've also got vanity pets which is one of my favorites because i always love having a little weird thing running around after me i currently have a pink sheep with a party hat on um so you can now collect and summon companions with pets in wild star accentuate your personal style with a pet rail dowser now don't say anything about my uh, personal style just because i've got a pink rail dowser running around after me um or a cute little probot 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 i don't the word probot just sounds wrong doesn't it really um there's also a new level 50 zone called star com basin uh, it's a new level 50 zone in levian bay uh, which has basically got lots of daily event driven content uh, where the caretaker looks after you and gives you a big hug and then tells you to go on from do stuff and um, the caretaker has sent out a call basically for help after getting caught in the middle of a dust up between the exiles and the dominion he doesn't cope well under stress can he have you noticed that he doesn't he really doesn't cope well under stress um too bad the creepy cavalry includes ichthians marauders and the strain it says here uh okay Let's go after those bad guys. Um, streamlining for the masses. Carvine headed this change in an effort to streamline much of your gameplay experience. We've also made some changes to questing and the UI while improving optimization. The most important of these changes are noted below. Level three to six zones. Levian Bay, Crimson Isle, Everstar Grove, the Northern Wilds have been streamlined to make quests easier to understand and to reduce time travel times between zones um, they've also fixed some quest sharing issues in level 40 to 50 which i won't bore you with um, taxi unlock changes basically this is a nice change as well taxi kiosks will now unlock automatically when you reach the minimum level for zones content so you haven't got to run around and find it the minute you're the right level to get to that zone the kiosk will be available to you so you can just zip along there from wherever you are so less running around basically which is always nice i feel um arc ship updates the destiny and gambler's ruin tutorial experiences have been streamlined they've done a lot of streamlining that seems to be their word of the month streamlining um bind on pickup items are temporarily tradable another nice one basically you've got two hours you can trade loot with other people on bind on pickups um there's a few other bits that i won't really bother you with objective tracker improvements new interface added for quest tracking path missions etc there 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 uh optimization yeah blah blah optimization frayed frames blah blah overhead icons for vendor variant blah 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 blah, blah. so uh free to play what do you think now i'm quite interested 
and finding out what uh, the current players, people who have been playing, what you think about the uh, the free to play. Do you think it's a great idea to try and get more people in? Are you a bit upset? Would you rather it stayed as a pay to play model? Uh, some might argue that some of it is pay to win. <laughs> Meh. Um, and how do you like the actual model that they're going to? Are you going to keep subbed, or are you going to are you going to not pay and just uh, go to the free model? What are you going to do? And if you're not playing at the moment, you have played previously, or think about playing, and you've dropped into this podcast, just thinking, I'll oh, see what Wild Star is all about. See if I want to go back to it. Are you thinking of coming back to us? If you've decided to know, uh, if you've decided not to, then why? If you are going to come back and play with us in Wild Star, what has made you come back? Is it the free to play, or is it the changes and the uh, the good things you've been hearing, basic about the community? One thing I'd like to say before I go into the free-to-play model, I was reading something quite interesting in the forums yesterday or today um, about... No, it's gone from my head. What was it about? No. It's gone. How can that happen? It was just there in my head. And I thought, I'll talk about that. No, it has actually gone. I'll come back because that's just going to be embarrassing. Um, I was hoping that while I did that stalling, saying it was embarrassing, that it would actually come back, but it won't. It wasn't actually something I was going to bring up on the podcast. Oh no, I just remembered. See, it has come back. YouTube. Someone pointed out that if you go and search Wildstar on YouTube, lots of negative stuff comes up. Because a lot of people, I'm guessing, last year were kind of looking at whether it was worth playing or not. So they were looking at reviews and stuff. So those reviews got lots of video views and have kind of ramped up those reviews higher on the YouTube ranking. So when you search Wildstar, all this negative stuff comes up about why it's failed or why it's not very good. Da, 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 da. And why are people always so negative? People never look at the positives of things. So, if you really want to help Wildstar as a community, what this guy was saying on the forum was why don't we need to start making more video content, showing people how good it is, people showing people why they should come and play, and now is the best time to do it. And maybe search out the videos that do show Wild Star in a good light. Maybe people showing raids and like tweet it to all your friends. You know, things that show the fun side of Wild Star and why it's good. We need to start getting those videos out there, start tweeting it, retweeting it sharing it amongst your friends on Facebook or whatever social media you use. I don't think young people use social media, um, Facebook quite so much now. Uh, I'm probably cast on in the older generation. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but whatever social media you use, share the funny, the good, the interesting videos of Wildstar. Get rid of all those negative ones off the top. I just realised that my mic's had a cover on it the whole time. It's probably, if I sound really muffled, it's because my mic had its cover on. Such a donut. <sighs> Free to play. Free, you know, I'm going to get really sore throat. I'm going to have a drink because this, you know, normally I get a bit of a, I get a break. I let someone else talk for a while. Um, but this is just me. Not very interesting for people listening on the podcast. Me just having a drink. In fact, not that interesting. People on the video. You just saw me glug some... Uh, orange squash so free to play <sighs> free to play what does that mean well it means anyone can download the game and play without spending any money to buy a world star or committing to a required subscription free the yeah, free fee <coughs> players can acquire the game create an account log in play through everything the game has to offer without spending any money so yes they really mean free but they are offering um, two different accounts, so you've basically got the free account, for people who don't want to pay because it's free, and what they're calling the signature account, which I'll go into a little bit later. But if you're subbed at the moment and you want to say stub, stubs, <laughs> you want to say stay subbed, you'll go onto the signature account, or your signature account will run until your credit runs out pretty much. And if you decide not to, to renew or to resub, then you'll go onto the free to play model. That's basically what it means. Um, so there's going to be no restrictions whatsoever on the content. Every zone, every dungeon, every raid, every battleground, they're all available to people on the free model. All players will be able to create characters, every race, every class and path while choosing any trade skills they like. 
characters include level 50 and path level 30 just as they can under the current system all updates are available to all players so it's not going to you know when you get the next patch it's not going to be dlc that will come with the free content as well um so sub players or those with active cred will automatically convert to signature service as i just said until the active period ends um what do you get though for each thing well i've been kind of looking into this just looking at the roughly what you get now if you're already subbed and you've been or you subbed before i think it was june the 15th so if you haven't really subbed already it's too late because it's the 17th today so by the time this comes, podcast goes out it'll be even later than that um so if you have been subbed up to that point regardless of whether you go on to the signature account or the free to, to free to play if to show your loyalty to wildstar you'll be getting exclusive Ichthian call amount, an exclusive DJ caretaker housing decor item, um, a disco snoglug companion pet, which is what I'm really looking forward to, a new housing music track, four months of signature service. So basically, if you've been subbed um, or you resubbed before the 15th of June, uh, to show your loyalty to Worldstar, you'll get four months of the signature service anyway regardless of whether you are on the free to play or the signature service so you'll get four months i don't know whether that means if you're subbed they just won't charge you for those four months i don't know quite how that works um, i'm sure people have asked questions uh, i might send in that email and ask them that myself so the difference between the free and the paid client and this is just the clients we'll go into other things later people on the free to play will get two character slots if you're paid you'll get 12 uh, so if you want to have lots and lots of alts then it's worth going on the signature um, account custom slots will have four on the free and six on the paid personal bank will have two slots on the free and five on the paid and uh, decor housing you'll get 1000 1, decor items decor 1000 decor items can be placed on the free client and 2000 decor items can be placed if you've got a signature account so i pretty much have to pay because otherwise my house will disappear because I have about 2,000 decor items already. Um, you're also going to be gaining loyalty points. Everyone can um, get loyalty points whether you're on the free to play or the paid. All our star players will be uh, a part of our lo new loyalty program and they will automatically accumulate loyalty points and achieve loyalty ranks to earn special items and perks. In fact, if you've already been subscribed to Wildstar, you will already have earned some and they'll be revealing more details in the future but basically if you're subbed or stayed subbed or you've been subbed you'll already be gaining loyalty points whatever wonderful things they will bring us um so what types of accounts will be offered um we've already said there's a free to play and a signature so the signature account let's have a look about that we've already talked about the uh, the free account um the account gets everything that the the free service gets along with uh, unique bonus bonuses and benefits just detailed in a little table they've done below um i've already said the difference in the clients um you can you can sub basically on a plan of one three six or twelve months um including cred game time cards or reoccurring payments there's several ways to pay uh the perks that you get as a signature account so it could be argued that some of them might be uh pay to win but i suppose it depends how much it affects sort of high-end stuff i don't know um you get different bids so if you're in the auction house you get three active buy bids on free three active sell bids and then since you get 13 30 blah 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 go down to things that are slightly more interesting circuit board crafting no bonuses for free 15 percent overcharge risk uh, for signature uh, accounts commodity exchange you get three buy and sells again for free and 30 uh, buy and sells for signature um, a little bit annoying I suppose if you're on free if you want to keep auctioning stuff I mean you're going to do it three times okay um, da -da 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 -da, crafting coordinate crafting no bonus for free 10% target radius size uh, on signature CS tickets no priority for uh, free players and uh, signatures get priority access now this is better than some MMOs um, What's it called? The Star Wars one, The Old Republic. If you're not a paid subscriber, you pretty much can't actually ask a ticket, which is why I've given up on that game, because I've got a problem with my authenticator, can't get on, but I also can't get hold of anyone to actually ask them to help me to sort it out because I'm not paying for a subscription. I'm not going to pay for a subscription just so I can get help to get back on the game, because I want to see if I'm, it's worth subbing. 
Um, but anyway, anyway, carbon haven't gone down that route, which I'm quite glad about. So although you don't get priority access, you still at least get access to the ticket system if you have a problem. Um, currency, you earn currency at the normal rate if you're free, 25% extra if you're on a signature. So if you like your gold, then you know, spend some of your real money that you earn in real life to get 25% extra. Wouldn't it be nice if it was the other way around? <laughs> you could spend world star money and you get a 25% extra bonus uh, in your in your pay packet in real life. If only, if only. Um, you don't get PTR access on the uh, free to play, but you do on the signature. Uh, you get priority access in queues as well. Queue bypass, priority access on signature accounts, no priority on free. So you get into instances, etc. quicker. Um, reputation is earned at normal rate on free. 50% extra rep from combat on signature. That is well worth it, I think. And you get 25% extra rep from quests. Um, Going to come in very handy on daily hubs, etc. Um, wake here, cool down. One hour. <laughs> One hour for... Uh, for free to play, 50% call time reduced for signature. Rested XP, 1% every 12 hours, capped at 150% of the current level on free. Earning rate doubled, and the cap is 200% of current rate if you are a signature account holder. Um, you earn XP at a normal rate on free, 25% extra on signature. Um, war parties. If you're on a free account, you can't invite or create a war party. But you can invite into and create war parties on a signature account so i'm guessing pretty much if you're running a guild or you're raiding etc you're going to want a signature account if you just want to come in and play the game and you're not worried about all that stuff you just want to play with your character and maybe have an alt and just have a little bit of fun now and then then just don't worry about paying don't worry about it just spend some money on some fluffy stuff instead uh you know pretty vanity pet or something Did you fall down and die? Oh god. Why would they even put that in the game? Carbine? I'm so angry I could just... I could just... I could just post on the forums! Flames from the forums. Okay, so not really an explodey one this week. I may have, uh... We may have, you know, normally... We, we talk about, or we did, it's not we anymore, I. When we were all we, we talked about people getting angry on the forums. What were people getting angry about on the forums? Because there were lots of angry people at the time. Um, hence the sounder. This is not really an explodey one, but one I'd like you, oh, I'll just drop my pen, um, you guys and gals and listeners and watchers to get in touch and give me your opinion, because your opinion matters. So Tiscon posted a couple of days ago, um, how will Carbine find the balance to keep older players in game while all the new players enjoy all of last year's content and features? Valid point, I think. Um, although Vet Ship Hands and Starcom and Contracts have been successful PvE content and features, I feel the game is lacking the main focus to a story in game, not Lawmageddon's blogs. <clears throat> um, there are, uh, are there plans to introduce the Elden eventually? A new level 50 story quest sign? Question mark. Uh, will we get a handful of new ship hands? Question mark. He's not saying question mark instantly, he's just putting them there and I'm accentuating them. Um, or go to this unexplored red moon zone we all heard about? Question mark. Will there be a whole new batch of contracts introduced soon to PvE? Question mark. New battlegrounds? Question mark. I am so willing to pay for all of this as DLC. I don't know why he's put that, because they're not going to do that. Uh, but I'd like to know what Carbine's plans are for the game's longevity. So I thought that's quite a good answer to ask you guys. Right, we've got, we have all these new people coming in on free to play. They're going to be playing all the old content, getting up to sort of where we are. What are we going to do during that time? Do you think that Carbine are, well, I'd like to think they will, will give us new new patch content? I'm, I'm guessing they won't want the new players to, to fall too far behind. So is that going to give us an issue as current players? Um, is there suddenly going to be a long gap of content with us not being able to do anything? Um, if that's going to be the case, what do you think they can put in to kind of keep us interested over that time? Now, what can Carbine do to keep us entertained whilst all the new expected players catch up? 
Now, if you're a bit like me, um, devil weight makes work for idle thumbs, they say. I'm a bit like that. You know, I'll get a bit mischievous uh, if I get a little bit bored. So that might not be good because I might go to other people's houses and, you know, knock tables over or something. I don't know. <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. But you know what I mean. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Um, maybe out of game content, I was thinking. Like an animated series. I would love that. I would love that. In fact, if Carbine aren't going to do it, can't somebody else do it? If you're a budding like uh, animator or something, do your own little animated series. I would love to see that. If you've already got one, just send me the link. On YouTube um, this is when uh, this is when the law segment was gonna be uh, but Sparky hasn't sent it to me yet so um, Granok law that's what's gonna be next I've got a, on my show notes I've got a big thing in red that says Granok law um, it's not there yet it's not there. but it will be it will be and if you uh, I want to catch up to where we are what we've basically done so far in the law segments is we've gone from sort of wild star in a nutshell and then going into all the different races and their sort of history in wild star we've only got three races to go now uh, I can't remember what they are the granok hang on I've got a little note here the hour in definitely and one other oh the mordish it's basically the last three exile races that we haven't done yet so it'll be Granok, then Orion probably, and then the Mordish, and then we'll go on to something else a little bit more interesting. <laughs> In 300 yards, turn right. Mm. No, no. I know a shortcut up here. Please turn around when possible. No, I know this way is faster. I'm an advanced GPS stabilizing quantum powered universal guidance system with bonus sarcasm and condescending modules built in, you lumbering oaf. Please follow the damn directions or face destruction. Hmm. These add ons are starting to piss me off. Hmm. So, uh, this is add on of the week. Add on of the week. This week, I've picked Ruin Master. Ruin. Rune Master, there's no eye in there, it's not Rune, Rune Master, that is my add-on of the week. Um, it's also been updated recently for Drop 5, and what Rune Master will basically do is help you plan your rune slots. <laughs> How did you guess? How, I mean, surely you guessed that pretty much from what it was called. Um, you can keep track of your rune sets and even shows you the amount of materials you'll need to craft your runes. So you kind of put your little build together and it'll tell you what you need and what you'll get out of it. Um, it gives you an overview with all your rune slots in your gear and what possible rune sets they could contribute and, uh, and what you can you can put the right rune in. So if you want to make runes less of a headache, because I know I do, you can download Rune Master from Curse. It's probably available elsewhere, but I use Curse, so that's going to be a bit of a plug for them. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to do uh, either next show, next show, um, is I'm probably going to do a little bit of a rundown for ruins, runes to try and help people. Not really. I'm not going to go into the technical stuff because, as we said before, and I'm going to maintain, we are not a min-maxing podcast. So it's just basically going to be a very, very, very basic just to help a few people out if you're completely confused about runes but just to give you a bit of a helping hand rune master is a great little add-on just to help you out hey uh you've reached geeks of nexus uh Unfortunately, Twitter's carrier pigeons were lost to Delicia C or something, so, uh, leave a message out to the town. Bye. Do you know, I really miss Sparky. Just listening to the, uh, the sounds and bumpers he's done makes me miss him a lot. I do miss him and his little quirkiness. Not that he's gone anywhere. I still know him. He's still a friend. It's just, it's quite sad not kind of having him there or there or there somewhere talking to me. I feel a bit lonely. But anyway, Tweet of the Week. 
Tweet of the Week. This week's Tweet of the Week comes from Chad Moore, Creative Director at Carbine Studios. Um, Chad Moore can be found at Papalicious, which I will spell at the end. Um, he had... <laughs> his, his tweet just made me chuckle. He put, Woohoo! Happy freaking birthday, Cupcake! Yeah, yeah, I know, it's technically over, whatever. Hashtag Wildstar. Uh, <laughs> it just made me laugh that he was basically late for his own birthday. Um, <laughs> so that's the tweet of the week. It's the best one I could find this week. Really sorry, not many good tweets went out. Uh, but you can follow him at Chad Moore, sorry, follow Chad Moore at Papalicious. That's P-A-P-P-Y-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. Sounds like a song. P-A-P-P-Y-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. Can't believe I just did that. But I'm quite impressed with myself being able to do it that quickly. Um, so that's it for this week's brand new Geeks of Nexus. I'm sorry I didn't have the law segment. I apologise. I will have it by next week, I promise. If Sparky doesn't do it, I will do it. It will be done. Okay? Um, thank you all for listening. You've all been wonderful. Thank you for giving it a chance with just old me. Uh, like I said, if you want to maybe have a chance of coming along and doing one of the shows with me, or you've got some ideas or something you want me to put in or something you want to know about, really want to get into the uh, community side of things again. We did a lot with that last year with the fighting championships and things like that. So if you know of any good community events that are going on, whether they're ongoing or there's something that's coming up in the future, let me know about it. I want to give them a plug. I want to uh, help promote the game. Um, and if you know of any good videos that need promoting to get them, you know, up the ranks in YouTube to get rid of all this negative stuff on there, then send the link to me on Twitter, um, either at the uh, Geeks of Nexus Twitter, which is at Geeks of Nexus, or on my Twitter if you fancy giving me a little bit of a tweet at Dracar. Good, <laughs> I can't even say it. At Dracas. At Dracas. D R A Y C A. Double S. Um, so that's it. Send any questions, as I said, or point of interest, either to Twitter or our website, www.epicgeeks.co.uk, or you can email us, geeksofnexus at gmail.com. I've also thought of something uh, which I'd quite like. Um, if you do have a question and you want to tweet it, do a hashtag AskGON. GON stands for Geeks of Nexus, obviously. Hashtag ask G-O-N and then I'll have a look at that hashtag for the next show and I know the questions for me on Twitter all right like that thank you very much I've been Drake Ass thank you very much for listening I'm hoping it wasn't all right with just me and I didn't babble on too much um thanks love you all Drake Ass signing off with a smiley face and a wink as always bye this podcast is part of the Epic Geeks Network. To find out more about our other gaming podcasts, head to epicgeeks.co.uk.